And here they are, into the fire of a local dust-up, off the back of perhaps the most impressive performance of the season so far. A sea of blue, black and white, old and young, with an ovation for the team who down the Pro 14 champions in the Champions Cup in a storm at Parker Scarlet's last weekend. Demonstrating that they're perfectly happy to switch from wet weather tyres when they need to. Playing conditions and the away form absolutely perfect. More familiar surroundings today. It's a dry, it's a totally different challenge for them. And uh, it's a totally different challenge for Tom Foley. Exciting day for him. First time he's ever policed this West Country derby. Anthony Woodthorpe and Paul Dix. The uh, assistants, CMO Stuart Terridge. And, uh, an odd little Aviva Premiership interlude this. Back as it is for one weekend and one weekend only. Wedged in between the first four night of Europe. Start of the Anglo-Welsh, the autumn tests. We won't reconvene in the league until November. But as fireworks go to go out on, but we hope that this carries some crackle and Stop some the colour. And the first attacking job from Tom Crow to Elite is to launch that little kick into the heart of Gloucester's defence that's well dealt with by the new fullback Billy Burns. There's another Billy, 12 trees. Starting fly half against Leicester last month, but he's back in midfield. More familiar surroundings. Here's a former Leicester player, Ed Slater, trucking it up. And the captain, Willie Hines, challenged his team this week to do the business away from home. Matt Banahan gets the home team going again. Back from injury last weekend in for Netley. Playing in his 18th Premiership derby against the Cherry and Whites. It's a funny start, isn't it? It was a wonderful kick-off by Priestland. They won the ball back straight away, and you ex immediately expected Bath to put Gloucester under pressure and just thought maybe the little kick over the top was the wrong option from Foto Elihi. But Bath managed to get the put into this line-out. Here goes Banahan again. Big HGV accelerating up the middle lane. Tom Dunn. One of those who will be um, joining up with England next week. Priestland uh, thinking about Wales, but not before today's business is over with. Jonathan Joseph tackled on the 10-metre line. This is Peronise. Back to Bristol and back again. A handful of games in Bristol's relegation season last season. Max Clark. And, uh, Owen Williams coming in with the hits on Zach Mercer. Willie, come on line eight. Uh, Owen Williams, part of the reshuffle caused by Jason Woodward's absence today from game. midfield to fly half. Yeah, they got the option of the scrum or line out. Zach Mercer there, sort of got a little bit of man and ball there and threw the ball forward. So referee just offering Willie Hines the option and Gloucester have plumped for the line out. So it's an area that's been a cause for concern for them so far this season. But they hit their man there. That man is Lewis Lovelow. That's one's backwards. His, uh, his mates gather around him. Richard Hibbard, the hooker, threw the ball in. And Josh Honeck at the front of all that as well. And Williams amongst those leading the chase for this kick. It was um, confidently gathered by Mercer. And this is Nathan Kapp. And first start of his season today, he's back from injury he's had a bit of time away with a sciatic nerve problem and now Clark enjoying himself more than ever right now challenged to perform at this consistent level Yules driven backwards after having to work hard to get out of their own half photo elite lining up Joseph falls under the tackle of Hines. use it Really, he waits. Zip and the speed and the energy of last season transferred into the start of this one. Well, Caught by on David Halifanua. Niti Tongan, who's getting a run of starts at the moment. Here's um, a less meaty Richard Hibbard, all those kilos that he shed last season. Adding to um, another impressive start to his campaign. 
taken up again by Burns. Tom Marshall's injured. James Hook elsewhere these days, of course, with the Ospreys. Woodward injured, so Burns at fullback today. Here's the fly half Williams, and that's neatly done with Slater and Slater finding Billy Twelve Trees, former Leicester to former Leicester to former Leicester. And now here goes Trinder, who is in sparkling form this season, to Hines. Trinder's up in support. Hines goes on his own, and it's the away voices that shout loudest, earliest. Lovely Gloucester try at the wreck. Well, we'll talk about that little dummy from Willie Hines in a minute, but it started quite patiently in their build-up. Took them a little bit of time to get over the advantage line, but as Austin said, it's out wide down the short side where they found the space. And look at this from Trinder. It's beautiful. He's able to just hold the ball up. Willie Hines, then he runs on a little switch line, and Hines just shows him the ball but doesn't need to use him. Really nice use of that short side. Ball in two hands, just a little fake dummy pump back in side to Hines, then he gives him the offload and what a start for Gloucester, the perfect start for the away team Excellent play from Gloucester tactically very, very astute, coming down that short side, isolating two defenders, and then it's the pace of Trinder that gets him away from Clark but that man there, the little dummy back inside, shows what a threat Trinder is, takes defenders away he utilises that threat goes under, over the line Willie Hines spent the week telling his team that they have to start here today like they've been starting the games at King's home this season, and they've done just that. Conversion attempt. In the booth of Billy Burns. Nope, Oz. Yeah, he's missed it, but if we take a look at this short side again, Nick, there's only three defenders there, but look at the dog leg. Zach Mercer's moving forward, but Rocket Aguni's worried about the width, and he starts to back off. That creates two decisions for Trinder he makes the right one turns on the gas and then it's this little dummy that creates the try brilliant try from Gloucester extraordinarily that's Gloucester's first try of the season away from home in the premiership in the first half one or two caveats to that statistic but I think you can follow it and it tells us that they've not been starting well away in the prem but this has been the perfect start yeah they've been giving themselves a mountain to climb but just spotted that three on two didn't they and that's something Bath will have to be aware of He's not on the ball. The way Bath defend, they're always short on the blind side. We saw Newcastle exploit it. We've seen other sides try and do it, but you've got to keep doing it time and time again because you go into the midfield, you get hit like that by players like Faletau behind the game line. Got to be careful, Gloucester, having got the early score, that they don't try and play in the wrong areas. Playing a little bit too much rugby. Watson strode forward confidently and uh, took it ahead of Henry Purdy. No Johnny May anymore, of course. Charlie Sharples is injured, so Purdy patrolling one of the wings today. Halai Fenur on the other. Watson with Banahan. And here goes Max Clark. Backwards. Perenice. Banahan, lovely swift hands to uh, get Clark going again. Ben Tafawai is still making his way back from a bang to the head, but Clark has been playing so well that he deserves his starting place anyway. Priestland, short, flat pass to Tom Dunn, accelerating onto it. Rocco Daguni starting to look interested on this near side, the bath right. Priestland, and he's looking for Rocco Daguni. Watson was herring after it as well, but nobody was quicker than the try scorer Willie Hines. That's a brave fall on the deck from Hines. He went front face, put his body on the line there for his teammates to be the last line of defence. Use it! By Ben Morgan, back in the Premiership for the first time since the opening weekend. And then walloped away by Owen Williams, uh, Priestland has time to it take touched. it quickly, but um, it was um, touched, um, so we um, have to stop now. Let's oh, it's Willie ball. Hines. Yeah, brilliant box-kicking game, but you've got to really capitalise on that. I think this is a coaching point. Look at this, this is a perfect kick to compete. They've got two players under the ball, but neither of them get off the ground. What that allows Watson to do is to just claim the ball on his own terms. 
you can turn the really good kicking game Tom, either into a turnover at the breakdown if you arrive too early or get off the ground yeah. and compete. It's obviously something that's come from the coaches saying don't compete, don't give away those penalties. They weren't able to compete at that line out either. Overthrown and Priestlin to Clark. Joseph not far away. Banahan interested as well beyond Joseph and little clip through for Banahan to hurtle after. Cherry and white shirts colliding with each other, but Trinder was the most significant. He got there to snuff out the danger, but there's still a bit of spade work to do here. Don't kick it! Burns has hurt himself, he's hobbling back into position. Morgan wrestling his way through the forest. This has to go off the field, Nick. Gloucester have got a lot of players off their feet. It's a good kick from Hines. Yeah, Billy Burns has got big problems. He's, um, he's holding what looks like his hamstring or the back of his knee. End of the line, John. Can we step off, thank you. On the line, end of the line. He's not going to have any time to um, take any prolonged treatment right now because it's a bad line out on the far side. Yeah, yeah, Joseph Gloucester, put the you. kick in, and just as it managed to stay in field, it's allowed Bath to keep this pressure on through their line out. Charteris rising high. It's not part of Come Wales' back, autumnal plans this time round. It's been dropped to the floor. He's then picked it back up and joined the all. Clear explanation from Tom Foley, Man leading to a Gloucester scrum. Then he's regathered the ball and rejoined them all. It's accidental offside. Yeah, made a bit scrum. of a mess of that bath, haven't they? That line out. Let's have a look at this again. Charteris up the highest, as you might expect, but fortunately the ball goes to the floor. Referee judges not a knock on, but once you pick it up, you then accidentally offside by driving it back on, into the mall, and Gloucester will get a chance to relieve the pressure. That's fine, let's go. Yeah, Sam Underhill. Eddie Jones actually had his old mobile number, uh, he told us this week, uh, which is why Underhill missed a couple of calls, much to uh, Eddie Jones' chagrin. Thought he was being ignored. Uh, with some trepidation, Sam Underhill rang away his new phone number to find out that no long term damage had been done to the relationship. However, a bit of um, short term damage being done to Bath's forwards here. First, the mistake from the line out, and now from the scrum. Yeah, I think yeah, Perinisa right. gets penalised, but uh, it's an area that Ackerman will really want to improve on their set piece in the Gloucester ranks. They've only had two penalties awarded the entire six matches in the Premiership this season, so they can now add one more to that tally. On the 10, please, guys. There's, uh, yeah, and Ockman, the, the uh, new head coach, 47-year-old, won 13 Springbok caps in his playing days. He started to play just on after that ten. wonderful period in 1995, <laughs> after the World Cup, when when uh, his second-row partner was Mark Andrews, who knew a thing or two about doing that job. And in the back row today is his son, Ruan. And that leap frees Trinder, who again creates Tackle! carnage at the moment whenever he has the ball in hand. How good to see Trinder Knock back on, doing on. what he does so well. And Knock that on, and ball was um, lost forward and we'll have a scrum. But my goodness, the early season work of Henry Trinder. Well, it's fantastic, isn't it? He's been prominently involved in the early try there. You can see he's got the confidence flowing through him. Zakamuni wins the ball lovely off the line out. And they're able to get in behind some pretty sloppy path defence. Unfortunately, they just knock the ball on at the next phase. Doesn't allow them to build the pressure. I think people make the mistake with Trinder. They think that he's not the biggest guy. They can go high on him, but he's exceptionally strong. And he puts his power into the floor really well. So he's able to stay on his feet, even when people are hitting him with big shots. One player in the league who has been deprived of seeing more than anyone else, I think, is this guy through injury. Incredible talent. Yeah, I don't think it'll just be Gloucester fans who are, who are wishing him that the longest uh, injury-free run imaginable. He deserves it, the game deserves it. It's better for him being involved. Here goes Jonathan Joseph. Oh, he's a little bit of a magic of his own, and this is Watson. Rocket and Goonies to his right. This has to be converted, and it will be. Time for a little bit of blue, black and white celebration. The backs in harmony. Joseph to Watson, to the man who doesn't know how to stop scoring tries. Well, Rocket again is the one that profits, but it's the scrum that ends up being the platform to really attack. And 
Delighted to see a team like Bath having the confidence to run from their own 22. It's Joseph that manages to step through. And he beats Owen Williams on the back by straightening the line. It's a big fend on Williams. He'll be disappointed. And once they get in behind, when you've got outside backs, look at this, it's the fend on Williams. And unfortunately, when you've got outside backs with the pace of Watson and Rocket Aguni, once you get in behind, maybe a question mark about the fullback being a little bit too deep. But take nothing away from Bar for the finishing ability of Rocket Aguni. Well, we just mentioned that about Trinder, didn't we? And it's the same for Joseph. You go high on him, he's a strong guy. He'll fend you off and break the break. Williams makes the mistake, but they were short of numbers, Gloucester, on that open side. In terms of club try scored, he's um, rapidly appearing in the rear view mirror of Matt Banahan. First complaint. Try set up by um, a couple of players, Watson and Joseph, who are putting in their final shift for their club before they head off for England for a month or so. Priestland will be with Wales. And on a day when the breeze is um, buffeting the wreck, it's uh, not a converted try, but it's a try piece. Five ball. Yeah, this gives you a better angle of it. Halafina is it back in the backfield, which you need him up front, up, uh, up flat, gives you a wider defence. That means that Trinder comes forward and has to back off. That puts 12 trees in two mines. Owen Williams misses the tackle, and then it's a foregone conclusion when you've got the talent of Watson and Rocket Aguni outside you. We start from Owen Williams. It's like Photo Elite gives it some leather. That, do you know what that stems from, Nick? I think it stems from He's having Burns Barkley. at fullback. Not an experienced 15. He's been out Charlie. of position on a number of occasions on so far. See there. And he's probably pulled the open side. Seven. On your left side, you'd never, ever bring your open side winger back that deep because it's the hardest side to defend from because you've got no nine to add up the numbers on the inside. And with all that extra strapping on his leg, I think about 5% of both legs are on display now. The rest of it is um, tape. But he is... Um, up and about and running which is the most important thing as is this man Trinder engineered a magical try you remember for 12 trees against Worcester a while ago and he is um, up to his tricks early on here Morgan um, uh, that was asking a little bit too much of Lewis Ludlow from his back row partner Ackerman I think there's just a little example of Gloucester's little bit of indecision you know they go one way and they don't really get over the advantage line. Slow ball from the breakdown, and then they go all the way to the other side of the field. Got a picture last time it's asking an awful lot of your team, and, and it's almost inviting the Bath defence to move up and force the mistake. That was better. Let's have a chat with um, Stuart Hooper. He's very much part of Bath's coaching team these days. It's It's been a bright, energetic start from both teams, Stuart. It's a, it's a typical West Country derby. It has, yeah, it's a great start to a derby. Um, I think the ball's been, been spun around a fair bit by the Gloucester players, so it's a good challenge for our guys, definitely. All right, Stuart, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. So both sides going down. Guys, just need to be a bit higher on both sides. A bit higher, please. Bring your feet up, just higher, please. Come on, then, let's go. The three just giving both sides the benefit of the doubt. Austin, what are you looking at in attack? Well, you just, you've got a completely different complexion of the back line. Yes, you've got pace in Watson, Rocket, Aguni, but what Banahan gives you, it gives you the ability to group these three defenders. He'll keep them together. That means they really struggle to get width when Bath want to go wide. They run him on a short line, they either give him the ball and he makes ground, or the ball doesn't come out of the scrum. They either give him the ball and he makes ground, or they use him as a decoy, and you concertina those three guys. I don't know what it's called, Nick, what's that, uh, what's that machine you play, the musical instrument where you've got piano on either side and buttons? An accordion. An accordion, yeah, it's like that. So you imagine the defence like that, you play the accordion, you've got a big guy, you bring it in tight, and then you try and stretch them out wide. That's the uh, analogy I was looking for, thank you. And play the music out wide. Exactly. Now there's a huge game up at Kingston Park this afternoon. First sellout there since the Johnny Wilkinson days and Toulouse Veanu continuing his purple start to this season. Um, giving Leicester an early 7-0 lead, but um, hearing that Toby Flood's just slotted a penalty against his old mate. So the Falcons 3, Tigers 7.
match that kicked off the same time as us. We'll keep you bang up to date with that one, of course. Joseph, and this is Rockin' Nguni. Burns had to plant his feet in concrete there. He did very well to stop Rockin' Nguni. Makeshift fullback, but stop the rocket there. It's the hint of a knock on from Nguni, the but they've missed by the officials. Joseph, Banahan, Underhill offering himself, snatches it away and finds Falatau. Really sharp bath handling in a short space of time, but not so much there. Picked up by Lewis Ludlow. Great turnover from Hibbard, but here we see Gloucester again. They've just made the turnover, the 10 metres from their line, and they're still playing rugby. It's great for the neutral, not so good if you're a Gloucester fan. Williams. But, um, the speed of Bath's passing right up to the point of the turn. Yeah, the passing was excellent. The back row combining yeah, thought, Underhill. So. Fanatown knowing he's got to come in field, but look at that. Hines and Hibbard working really hard, and it's Hibbard that's got the strength to pass it on to Ludlow and force the turnover. It's good Seven. work. Austin, that kind of passing looks slick, but I guess at the breakdown, you've got to make sure that you've got more men there to help clear out other than the scrum half. Well, sometimes you just get tackled in behind, but they're off again. It's all going through Joseph at the minute. He'll be delighted that he's seeing a lot more ball, particularly with all the chat about the 13 shirt. Well, that was initially good work, it seemed, from um, Hibbard on the floor, but somehow it's ended up back in Bath possession. And this is Cat. Oh, good to see him going uh, again, returned at the Parker Scarlets from a, a lengthy time away. Joseph, uh, this time to Banahan, not quite so sweet. Yeah, Hibbard manages to fall on the loose ball, but he recognised he was isolated, so wanted to throw the ball back. And then, Closer. ball, just wonder if it went a little bit behind. No, Banahan should do better than that. Wouldn't have liked to have stopped him from there. Once he gets on that outside it break, it becomes very difficult to stop. And, of course, the offload okay, to the go. extra man out wide. You well, saw the angle the there and the, the angle of Purdy's eyes. So Banahan catches that, he's running at Purdy's back. Purdy then has to think, do I step in on Banahan or do I stay out for the extra man? I don't think he'll be putting that drop pass down on his, his show reel though. Just, um, edging ahead of Steve Borthwick today. One other statistic actually, uh, he is equaling David Barnes' record for Premiership derbies in this match. Um, Bath derbies. Purdy His first man took it up, that's been stolen back. however, um, Palatow was involved and Priestland and Joseph again with that little kick, Backwards. attempting to go underneath the radar of that Gloucester defence. Tom Dunn's ready for it, instead it goes to Underhill, driven up by the captain, Charlie Yules shouldering the responsibility of the leadership, helping fill a gap left by Dave Atwood for the time being at the moment. Matt Cl and Max Clark castled in midfield. Use it! Banahan. It, needed to be held up by Slater, which he was. And then the other second row, Tom Savage, comes in with a pile driver. Joseph fires it to Priestland, um, who once more involves Yules. Great ball is out. Hibbard, again, working hard to um, try and win things back for his team, but it's still Bath and Clark. Underhill at scrum half to his hooker, Tom Dunn. Watched Ross Batty running around at training this week. Had an open session down here, so Batty not far away. Here goes Rocket and Gooney once more. Skip beyond the challenge of John Arfoa. Yules. Again, it's Hibbard. How much work is he doing in a defensive effort at the moment? The fast feet of Watson. Not beyond Arfoa, but not Savage. Yeah, Bath up to 13 phases now. Gloucester's defence just containing them so far. Play on. Friesland, Charteris, a bit of a stretch from Joseph, but he did well to keep that ball in play for Banahan, and 
Mercer was up in support, but again, it's Jonathan Joseph. So many players working so hard at the moment. On and off the ball. And again, it's Yules, and once more, it's Cat. Penalty's coming. Mercer. Oh, he almost blasted his way through the tackle of Williams, but Williams just about hung on to the scraps. That's been lost, so we'll come back for the penalty. Yeah, it was no, no, no release. clear release from the tackle, I think. Was it Savage? As Post Cat ball. made his breakthrough, but look at that. 18 phases of Gloucester defence and Bath attack ends in a penalty. Well, Mercer might be having a difficult time at training on Monday morning. That guy that's was in the ball is acres way. of it's space out dangerous. wide. Mercer decides it's, it's, it's better to throw a dummy right, yeah. than give it to one of the quickest guys on the pitch. <laughs> Well, Let's have a look at um, what we call the playmaker balance, where the majority of the um, of the attacks are built off. Is it is it nine? Is it ten? Last is it twelve? Exactly where's it going? Well, Austin was saying actually, well. normally it's off nine and ten. A lot more, the higher percentage is off nine and ten. But for some reason, Bath have identified the Joseph channel. Maybe the way that Gloucester are defending, the fact they want to get the ball into Jonathan Joseph's <laughs> hands as much as possible and. His involvement in the early part of this game, the first 25 minutes, has been very high, much higher than you usually see. The man of the match, 18 points, down in Clinetley last weekend, and uh, back on his home carpet, Rhys Priestland adds three more points, and for the first time, after 25 minutes of this latest West Country instalment, Bath lead, 8-5. Yeah, of course, that just Yes, three points for Bath, so easily could have been seven. This ball goes now, Joseph scores. Or at least he's got a one-on-one -on -one with Hines. He runs in, gives him a piece of his mind. And realises that could well have been five points for him. There's been another try at uh, Kingston Park. We'll tell you about it in a moment. Game between Newcastle and Leicester. Meantime, Mercer finds photo Ali'i. Burns eager to get on with things. Williams and this is Halai Fanua. Held up strongly by Underhill. Hines and uh, using his own mates to weave a way through the defence. So, latest from Kingston Park and a second try for Leicester. Toulouse Veano got one early on and Ben Youngs has just got another. Um, Newcastle three. Leicester 14. No Matt Tamua today for Leicester, but they seem to be creating tries nonetheless. That's a massive game in terms of the makeup of the table. If Leicester go on to win that, they separate the table by, a, the by five off. points with the top half and the bottom half. Really big game for Leicester. Yeah, today's a really big game for Bath in terms of that top four as well. Lovely kick from Priestland allows them to turn the screw now on this Gloucester team. Well, a low skimming line out into the arms of Yules and they get the drive on. Low, hard pushing body positions. Tom Dunn's in the middle of it. Oh, the ball was, was there for Photo Lee, but he wasn't looking for it initially. Now here goes Clark, pirouetting his way through. Joseph again. And the fulcrum of what Bath are trying to do in midfield. Zach Mercer calling for the cavalry. In the end, he picks it up and goes on his own, runs into Savage. Charteris will pick this one up. Oh, and then that's lost by Joseph. Slater, Morgan. Again, they can afford to show some ambition here. They've got the advantage for the time being. Oh, yes, still knock on advantage. Sorry. It's advantage over. And the end, Owen Williams says, um, let's uh, hoof it into the main stand. Priestland again doesn't take long. The speed that this match is being played at, it's barely a time to breathe. Rock and Nguni. Played the best part of half an hour. Willie Hines with the first try for Gloucester. Samisa Rockendanguni squaring things up for Bath. Reese Priestland's latest penalty, the difference. Yules. Here is Priestland, and here goes Watson again with Rockendanguni in close proximity, held onto by Halai Fanua. 
Well, I know worked so hard to get that ball back. He very nearly did. Well, that was a meeting of two very big players. Bath keep the pressure on. Timber against Fiji in a part of the country that is quintessentially English. Slater over the ball, Lawrence. Yeah. Really nice body position. Well, normally it's your back row, but when you've got second rows who are prepared to put their head in there, it would have worked hard on this, not just at Gloucester, but at Leicester before. And look at that, really strong. I think it's a positive tackle as well from Morgan. As he hits the tackle, he spins and puts Dunn sideways, opening up the ball. It's been a good, strong defensive set for the try for Gloucester. Come on, Gloucester, let's go. Ed Slater, who'd have played in plenty of East Midlands derbies down the years, he's adding this to his stamp collection. Well, I know we've got another 10 minutes till half time, but if you look at Gloucester's previous record this season away from home, you know, the, the home team. <laughs> it's like a bonus point win <laughs> so far. So they are still in the game, and that is what will be encouraging lots of Gloucester supporters. You've got to stay in the fight for as long as possible. And you have to say, he'll be delighted with the opening 30 minutes or so. Not just in attack, but particularly defensively, because they've been under a lot of pressure. Line out no, snaffle by go, Slater. Been nursing a poorly finger over the last three weeks, but um, he's here with us again. Josh Honeck amongst those um, who was peeling round to hopefully find on to John Arfoa, but then the World Cup winner dropped the ball. Continue to show to me like that, we're going to have a problem. Just let him take it. I want to know you can see it. He's holding it on. This is the view from Tom Foley. Next job! New signing Fraser Balmain, by the way, uh, arrived from Leicester over the summer. Won't here, be around again until Christmas because he's making his way back from a knee injury. So John Arfoa um, having to slot between number one and number three at the moment. Honeck as well. Bit of time on the tight head. They can swap around those two. It's a tough position that front row. Bath welcome back Nathan Cat, of course, today. And they've had their own fair share of injury problems in that front row. It's a good contest at the moment. Look at that possession wise, Bath. Coming that side. Two thirds, one third. I think if you are a prop, though, in the lower leagues, you should keep yourself fit because there's a lot of guys coming out on loan. Well, there's your mark. And, um, he turned 34. A week or so ago, as uh, Nathan Cat, uh, Kane Farmer Newport has That's gone for the season with his ruptured Achilles. Max Lehi uh, swimming around the A League now, so he's not far away. But, um, you know, life is tough for every rugby player at the moment, but particularly for those long haired brutes, blokes in the front row. We've seen Bath using this scrum as a chance to attack. If they might just call another scrum now. A lot of weight well, coming through Gloucester too early. I'm not sure they will. It looked to me like Paranisi was getting turned inside out there. Well, normally, scrum. they put the ball straight into Foto Lee's hands and go for that quick tap or use Falatau off the base. Just too much movement, yep. Yeah. Look like Honeck has got the upper hand here. Lawrence, I don't know what you thought from the previous scrum, but this will be a good indication. They got done for the pushing early then. Might be one here where they just back off Bath and try and get it again. You're laughing, you're laughing Nick, because I'm talking about scrums. Oh, I just, th those of us who've been listening to you for seven years, Lars, will, will be smiling like I am. I'll tell you about a holiday. Yeah. You were, you were on your emails every time you went to a scrum seven years ago, but you're actually paying attention now. It's uh, it's an education. Just making it up. Friesland to Joseph. Oh, Ally Fenera again, rearranging dentures. This time, Anthony Watson's, although it's a you're bad okay, penalty, but um, uh, David Ally Fenera will think that he's probably won that little contest. Yeah, he won the tackle, but unfortunately, Watson's hurt. Come off, he's on the mark. Let's have another look at this he's again. There's nothing wrong with the tackle, he times it right. He's just bridging our men in, they're both on their feet. Oh, wait, wait. Good, solid contact. Unfortunately, the tackler just rolls the, tackler the wrong way. Still on the wrong side. And gets himself on the wrong side, and Watson's unable to play the ball. So whilst it looks good on the Post highlights ball. reel, the outcome will be that once Anthony Watson gets Post back ball. to his feet, Reese Priestland will be able to pump this straight back down into the corner. I feel like we've set up perfect view. Yeah. That last one, they can 
two of the two are tighter. Yeah, but the ball is at the back and we play away. I, okay. I'm aware. What, I, know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Well, England, um, we've already got a question mark over the, the moment, yeah. over the fitness of um, Elliot Daly. Um, Piers Francis as well. Northampton fly half. The last thing Eddie Jones would need is for Anthony Watson not to be able to take the flight down to Villa Moore over the next day or two. Yeah, let's just hope it's nothing structurally damaged there and, and he's just winded because it was a really big thump. Let's have another look at this again. And it's an HIA as well, yeah? Bang. That HIA hurts. as well. Whichever way you look at it, I suspect he'll be going off for an HIA. They have, but time is off. to make sure he's okay. No, oh, this is... Um, this is turning into a potentially punishing okay. weekend for England with their autumn ambition Blood, starting to, uh, to gather some minutes. momentum. I'm fine. Let's go another guys, player with a, a question mark over him. He's off for a, a head injury assessment. Time is on. And uh, Alid Brew is with us. He was um, busy on his return to Parker Scarlet's last Friday, chasing hard up and down the wing. Um, well, I was on this side to on see that how they one, so. rearrange <laughs> things. Maybe Brew will just slot straight in at fullback. It's it's a, the end of all that, it's a bad penalty for yeah. Reese Priestland. And it's a sign of his kicking confidence that he's the lined the, the ball up for the post. Hold it. Off it goes. Not quite. Not quite. I spoke to him. Todd Blackadder's men um, still leading by the three points. Todd Blackadder and Johan Ackerman um, renewing a Southern Hemisphere rivalry that was forged back in their Super Rugby days. Williams clears long into the arms of Banahan, who it looks as if he has gone to fullback. Uh, Mercer did well to. Make sure it remains about possession. Two Welshmen. Friesland to Charteris. No. Scrambling work over the top from Lewis Ludlow. Again, just gumming things up a little bit. So boot to ball, photo Ali'i. Uh, Burns came in bravely. Um, he seemingly none the worse for the right leg injury that he was a bit concerned about a while or so ago. 12 trees, Morgan. Williams, Alfoa, held on to by Mercer. Williams again to 12 trees. Hibbard calling for it, taking on Joseph and Falatau. Alfoa a little bit slow getting back to his feet. And uh, Savage needed a second bite at that what ball, that? but bit firmly the second time. Williams, there goes Purdy. Not afraid to play Gloucester, are they, in this kind of middle part of the field? Really giving it a go up to the fifth phase. Just got to make sure the runners don't become isolated. Falatau uh, doing what he could over the ball, but not quite enough. Again, it's Trinder. Ackerman. Finally manages to get the ball down. Arfoa testing the uh, tackling prowess of Yules. And this is patient stuff from Gloucester, but they're beginning to make progress, starting to make the metres beyond the 10-metre line now. Most phases in the match for them. Yeah, the, the options are down their short side. If they can work the space there a couple of times, they've had the overlap and they've not used the hands, but it's coming. Well, well, strength from Falatau there, Nick. He gets half cleared out, but he puts rocks his weight back onto his inside foot and keeps one arm in the tackle. Okay, let's go, Reese. Carry on. Really, really clever turnover. Slightly isolated Ackerman. Watch how he gets rocked back and just keeps one hand there in the tackle. His other arm's been taken away. Really clever turnover. Yeah, he stamped his prints all over this fixture last season with a hat trick, and he had his prints all over the ball there. It's just John Arfoa, you mentioned earlier on Tom, in the, uh, in the play, was a bit slow to get to his feet. He's just getting Tom, a little Tom. bit of attention. Thankfully, he's okay to rejoin 
the line out. Well, rugby tonight uh, is on tour again next week. Uh, Babes and Hugo towing their caravan to Billericay, well done, yeah. deepest yeah, Essex, the the line, for okay. a Saracen special. Richard Barrington, uh, Billericay yeah, Dicky, reference that um, only those who remember Ian okay, Jury well, will um, remember. And then next week, Anglo Welsh opening weekend, Leicester against Gloucester Six Saturday, man. Saracens Quinn Sunday. In initially by Mercer, and this is Rocket and Gooney. Try got Bath back on level terms. Priestland's penalty has put them ahead. Still just the three points between the two. Underhill. Thank you, Billy. Bath pressing the accelerator. Joseph kicking the ball through, and the man who's with us temporarily, Alad Brew, just beaten by the ball. Well, we've seen Joseph put that kick in once already. He's really physical, yeah, isn't he? The with the amount of possession he gets, and just one more bounce the other way of that ball, and Ali Brew will have picked that up and gone over the line. It's a delicate little chip, but just a little bit too much on it. Blasted over the top, thrown the best part of 30 metres by Hibbard. Flowing the responsibilities on the right boot of uh, the captain. Willie Hines, Foster's scrum you. half involved. Not so um, one of Bath scrum halves on the left hand the side. Chris on. Cook, who fell over at home and um, hurt his hand. Francois Lowe, who has had one or two hand issues of his own as well, but on the rugby pitch rather than domestically. And he'll be missing for a while or so yet. Mercer, and this is Foto Ali'i. Bath all uh, want to try and finish this first half on a bright note. They've had the lion's share of possession. Gloucester doing a lot of defending, but it's only 8-5 on the scoreboard. This is Peronese. Sean Knight, Henry Thomas as well on that list of injured props right now. Looks like Alan Brew, Nick, who's come on for HIA, may well have pulled his hamstring. He's struggling out wide. Friesland cut back inside, still just outside Gloucester's 22. A minute to go in uh, what has been an energetic first half at the wreck. Yeah, you've been pulled over, it's going to be blue ball, they were going forward. Well, again, he's, he's rivaling Billy you're Burns for the use of leg tape. And, uh, yeah, you're right, Oz, he's clearly not happy. Struggling, isn't he? Been, uh, he's been a good try scoring form, three out of five yeah, in five games. But Often when you come off and you come on rather and you're not expecting it necessarily, you suddenly uh, have to snap into action with the kick through from Joseph. It's probably what caused it. Now, final opportunity with them. Seconds ebbing away. Still with a bigger lead at half time than just the three they hold right now. Oh, it's a ball that spat out, and Photo Elite needs to control this. And here goes Clark. Running into Williams and now crawling towards the 22. Ball lost forward on the floor by a frustrated Sam Underhill, but it's. His side who will lead at the break, um, although Gloucester have never been as close as this after a 40 minute so far this season. They'll feel they've got a lot to play for as they have in the second half. Willie Hines gave them an early lead. Samisa Rockendanguni squared things up for Bath. Reese Priestland's penalty means at the break. It is the home team who lead the West Country Derby by eight points to five. A bit more muscle for to Ali. And then, not for the first time, Joseph trying to thread that through off the boot. Doesn't work. Halai Fanua running into Don. Ben Urbano did well to make a complete mess of that. Using his 120 kilograms, best part of 19 stones, and all of that weight put to very good use. Well, it's just disappointing. Halai Fanua just lacks a bit of indecision. And in the end, with all that space to run into, he runs straight into 
the tackle yeah, I've done, which I find a little bit strange. You know, it'll you be run across the field and on. then find a bit of space. And after that, Gloucester are always struggling and a good counter ruck and they force the penalty. And imagine Priestland might have a crack at this. Yeah, he played nine without the ball. Right then, what's, um, what's going on at um, um, ben. Kingston Park? Leicester yeah, were ahead uh, at half time. Um, Nicky Gonover got the try before the break against his old club. Uh, Toby Flood Ben's played nine uh, has just the ball. added another three points via the boot. Yeah. So uh, we are within one in the northeast. Uh, Wayne Barnes, by the way, a word for the referee today up there. 190th Premiership game for him means that he pulls alongside Chris White's all-time Premiership record. Chris White, a, a bloke who would have kept Austin exactly and Lawrence is, yeah. in their boxes when uh, when he was okay, time on, in his whistling days. A little bit sore, but back on his feet. And, uh, a long range kick for Reese Priestland to restore Bath's lead. Freddie Burns is serving out the final week of his suspension and watched by Dave Atwood. Lead regained by the fly half today. Reese Priestland, Bath 11, Gloucester 8. Yeah, they've seen uh, very little of the ball in the opening 10 minutes of the second half of Bath. It's been much more defending by them, but the one opportunity they do have, they managed to convert into points. Charteris again up in the clouds on his own. Garvey steams in. Buells is there as well. Five. Clark and Banahan lead the chase. Burns the favourite for the ball. Thanks, 11. Owen Williams to um, Ruan Ackerman. The new boss's son um, remaining busy in the absence of Ross Moriarty, continued absence of Moriarty. Purdy again, popping up in midfield. And here goes Slater. No, it's all off feet. Th um, taken on by Savage. Made a part of every Premiership game for the last three seasons. This is his 100th start today. Hibbard. Honeck. Mary All Black, twice a super rugby winner in his days with the Chiefs and the Highlanders. 12 trees again to Purdy. Savage, the first to respond. And now Williams. And 12 trees and driven up by the new man Simmons. Still on while Henry Trinder is taking his head injury assessment. Halai Fanua, held on to by Joseph. Both sides have, have built patiently from long range in this match, um, trying to dodge the big hits, the latest of which was affected by Falatau. Hines, where's he off to? Oh, he manages to bamboozle Jonathan Joseph temporarily, but then the pass went astray. Yeah, it should be a Gloucester line-out, which it is, and they've taken it quickly, they're ready to go again. Honeck, 12 trees. Oh, he's gone through a hole, almost. That hole was closed quickly as it needed to be. Morgan to Arfoa. Yules with the tackle. Burns, fingertip stuff to involve Simmons. And now Purdy. Honeck again. Just that little spin before the tackle of Yules allowed him to get the ball away. And that is wonderful. How about that? from a tight head prop. John Arfoa with the artistry and another try for Gloucester and another try for Hines, but it'll be about the number three. Well, he's had some shocking hands in the middle part of the game and yet again, that is shocking from a prop. Unbelievably good. The offload out the back of the hand. Willie Hines throwing a re running a really intelligent line. Honeck starts it by taking a loose pass and then look at that pass as he's falling. 
That's a supporting player's dream. Well, it's good identification of where the space is, isn't it? Arfoa has got his head up. Charlie Yules is a little bit too wide. They don't get their bodyguards or the first defenders in place quick enough. And Arfoa puts the little pace on and then the spin and the offload, as you say, out the back to Hines, ever-willing runner, and Gloucester hit back straight away. And he's smiling for the right reasons this time is Arfoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's magical. There's something special about watching big men handling bone china teacups, and that's what um, Arthur was doing there. Just lovely. And Hines has his second. And this for a four point lead. And it is a four point lead. And Gloucester very much with their second half tails up here in the match that matters more than any during a Premiership season. Yeah, they were patient in the build-up. Ever willing runners. Akama really to the fore. Ed Slater coming into this game more and more as a ball carrier. And they deserve their score, but they're unable, unlike Barr, to clear up the kickoff and handy possession straight back. Some Gloucester changes in the meantime. Muti Matu um, on for um, Richard Hibbard and Val Rapava Ruskin as well. Um, coming on for Josh Honek. There's uh, Matu, Samoan international. And there's been a, a buff change as well. The, uh, the former Gloucester man, Elliot Stook. Um, 42 Premiership appearances for Gloucester. Um, has replaced Luke Charteris. Um, and we're hearing that um, he's passed his head injury assessment, so Henry trimmed the back with us shortly. Well, that's good news, isn't it? Because he's a man in form. He doesn't want to be spending too much more time off the field. His bath get a good scrum, good nudge on. Referee's making him play it, though. Friesland beyond Clark to Joseph. It's opening up a little bit here. Watson accelerating onto it. He had to take the pass around his shoulder. Friesland again, and... Here goes young Zach Mercer, how well he has done. And to get the ball away to Foto Ali'i again. A number of black, blue and white shirts. And once again, Watson in the wars, absolutely collided backwards. Was that Halai Fanua again? Yeah, well, yes. it was. Just all a little bit too lateral from Bath, though. They started with a scrum on the edge of the 22. And just needed to take someone just to take the ball forward. It's not what Watson wanted to do there. With Rocco de Guni. I'll find out. Time's off. I'm I'm just I think Tom Foley's going to take yeah. another look at this tackle, is he? Okay. Steve, we'll be happy, yeah? I'm still Tom. trying to get a look, mate. Just a so. reversal of the HIA. Trinder okay, uh, so back done, yeah? with us for Simmons. Yeah, Tom, can you hear Thomas Dixie. Just wait, mate. I'm just having a look at this. Just wait. That. Well, there's so, nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a fine play on yeah. Good hit. He's actually wrapped his arms br brilliantly and hit Watson right in the ribcage, which hurts. Motu Matu's first throw. Overcooked, but Morgan was there to sort things out. Wait there. Forward, wait. You just feel with Gloucester, you know, if they're going to go on and win this game, they've got to pay attention to the basics Wait, of the no, game. That, you know, they've got themselves in front. They've worked really hard to earn the right to be in front on the scoreboard. They mess the kickoff up by knocking it on. They then throw the line out over the top. You've got to get your basics right, the foundations. That's Val Rapava Ruskin trotting on to uh, dirty his hands in one of these things for the first time. Summer move from Worcester. Line out, 15, taken really. by Garvey. Beth will be um, grateful to have him back in harness. Tom Dunn, one of those off with England to Portugal tomorrow. Uh, Gloucester offside. Priestland to Mercer. Yeah, Ben Morgan just didn't time his run. It's interesting because Foto Lee had to sort of pass the ball from the other side of the breakdown. And when you do that, it, as one of the players in the outside channel, you've got to time your run. And he just steps up out the line a little bit too quickly. And just look at this. 
Spoke to Lee, he's unsighted Ben Morgan where the ball is, and he just comes up too quick. As you said, though, Lawrence, there's another example of Gloucester applying pressure to themselves rather than to the opposition. And from an experienced guy as well. They can cut out these errors, they're going to give themselves a good chance. Ackerman's um, priority number one this week to work on their away form. Not one away in the Premiership for a while. They will um, still be ahead, whatever the outcome of this long range kick. This would beat his previous Premiership best distance wise from all the 46 meters. And maybe that extra distance in his mind meant that um, the accuracy went missing. At the moment, yeah. Teammates, by the way, hijacked his mobile phone on the way back from uh, Scarlet's last Friday and rang Rob Howley via Siri. Uh, he, he saw the missed call um, and um, rang back with a bit of good news of his own. <laughs> Always rely on your teammates, can't you? Here goes Anthony Watson. I'm going to have a word with um, Johnny Bell. Gloucester's defensive guru in a moment. Let's just see where this latest passage of play takes us. Clark, it's a bit fortunate with the ricochet there to get another go. Stook was the one who drove it up and now done doing likewise with some help from Joseph over halfway. Ball's ripped by Gloucester. And Gloucester have managed to rip that back. It's an and important turnover as well, just as Bath were building a momentum and Hines goes right, to the right. boot. Has he overcooked that? No, he hasn't. Banahan, straight back at them. Straight back at Trinder. Just as he's going to ground. Um, just a little bit high and it'll be a penalty. Really? Players moving to ground. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, no, that's a harsh call. When he slips, yes, it, it's round the... Just above the neck. Into touch. Let's have a chat with uh, Johnny Bell. You're you're ahead, Johnny. Um, based a lot on what you're doing defensively. What are you what are you seeing that you like in that uh, defensive line at the moment? Well, just our attitude is good. We're getting off the line. We're making our tackles fundamentally and uh, and bouncing to our feet again. Um, you know, Bath are, are very dangerous, and if they get those those one-off runners into space, the likes of Watson, uh, Rocket and Gooney, then you know they can cause you a lot of problems. So. It's important that we make our tackles get back to our feet and just keep frustrating them with our line. I know as a midfield back, you'd have liked John Arfoa's uh, little push off the ground yourself. That was all right for a tie head, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's, he's got all the bells and whistles, and uh, it's a great offload that, uh, that gave us that try. So, yeah, I know it's just important that we keep doing our, our basics well and that we, uh, we carry well. I think Oz talked about just eliminating mistakes. If we can uh, play those basic things, fundamentals, bring pace to the game, get our carriers carrying well, then I think we're going to be, uh, we're, well, we always are in this game, and it's hopefully we can finish it out. All right, Johnny, great stuff, thank you. Thank you. I'd be pleased with the last little defensive set from his Gloucester team, really getting their line speed and gang tackling these Bath runners. They look really up for this Gloucester. It's interesting to hear Johnny Bell as well talking about maintaining the intensity, the pace, the energy, they're not going to try and lock the door here it's the way that they have um, pushed Bath back from where the game line started and look where they'll have the ball now where's well, that defensive set it's a nice time to talk to the defensive coach because it's been brought to life by his team that set of five tackles have forced Bath backwards and it's the pressure that applied on Piranesi that forces the knock on and the mistake okay we're all here let's go then on, guys. You're just he about knows he's under let's pressure, Nobody. particularly from this scrum. If Gloucester can get a penalty here, on, we'll get the ball back to Owen Williams. There's only one choice here for a 10. After that passage of play that your forwards have just gone through defensively, you've only got one decision, and that is to kick the ball along the floor into the Bath red zone. Force that pack back, make them start again from their own try line. You've got two kicking options either side. You've got Burns and Owens must be able to get the ball into the red zone. It's 12 trees through the hands to Halo Fanua, and that went forward. And, it, you know, this is the areas of the game when you've got to look back on the video and say, have we made the right decision there? We talked Stop about two. game management. You're away from home. You're winning for the first time. 
you're in that sort of period after 60 minutes where you've got to start making the right decisions because they actually influence the outcome of the game. And as Austin, you said, for me, if I was up front, I'd be looking at my fly half saying, why did you not stick that down in the corner? John Affair being replaced by Gareth Denman. Yeah, absolutely. And also, if you are going to run it, don't run it down the harder channel. When you've got a scrum in front of you, if you get on the left channel, you've got a defender like Carl Foto Ali defending from the inside. They both know it. Either you come the other way where there's more space and it's easier to kick. You can have a sort of half go, make a break, but then get the ball on the floor. Going down the left side, it's a lot harder to kick into the channel. Wait, guys. We've got both. Wait, hang on. Both tight heads, wait for the buying call. Please get your feet under you, hold your balance. I think you've got a shoulder there. Oh, half a dozen resets now, but um, Tom Foley explaining things clearly. Gareth Denman uh, recently joined us, former Saints man. Taking the opportunity with the former Tiger Fraser Balmain injured at the moment. Oz, what are you looking at? Well, just this side of the field, when you've got Rocket Aguni there, you probably just want to give him a bit of a one on one. He's one of the hardest guys to put down. Look at the width, he's got 12 meters that he can attack Halafanua into. I'd fancy giving him a go, but they're not, they're going to come the other way. Priestland, Joseph. Watson was accelerating onto that, but it was the miss pass to Banahan instead. And they'll come back in field. Matt Banahan, 10 carries now. And uh, on we go. Oh, a little bit loose. And Garvey's herring after this with Halai Fanua. And uh, the little peep on Foley's whistle will bring us back. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just the delay on the pass by Bath meant that the defence got up in the face of Zach Mercer. And it just He's forced a knock on. the knock on. He's entitled to be tackled. Knock I think on. the pass was meant for Falatau, actually. He's entitled to make the tackle. There's nothing wrong with that because thought the guy was in possession. Yeah, Stuart, for me, that's just a, a high tackle um, as he's trying to regather possession. I'm thinking penalty only. It's just but a super tackle. Tom Foley saw penalty. this in the game and said he wasn't in possession of the ball. Oh, that's ridiculous. You cannot give a penalty for a high tackle for a guy who doesn't have the ball. Game has gone mad. Post call. I think if we listen back to what Tom Foley said, he actually saw the incident. It was right in front of him, and he let play go on. Just wonder whether he caught a glimpse of it on the big screen that was directly ahead of him well, as think, um, we, yeah. were, we were tucking ourselves in for the next phase. I think the 10,000 Bath fans helped him with the decision. A little bit of that as well. <laughs> well unlike the previous kick, this... Um, much more within Priestland's range. Well, it's a penalty that um, Gloucester and their supporters will talk about, but it's a penalty that Bath celebrate. They're within a point. Yeah, this is the penalty again. I think he's got. I mean, yes, it is a it is a penalty in terms of the high tackle because it's a seatbelt, but I don't think you can give a penalty against a player who doesn't have the ball if he's already knocked it on. Uh, it's, a, it's a point to debate. Not Taken high by Stuke. Extra spring in his step right now. Started to make his name in cherry and white. He's um, since become an essential member of the bath squad. It's your own hand. Okay, use it. Burns charging after this, but it was punched forward by Banahan. It's not on by uh, 11 here. Well, Gloucester will get this ball back, but again, we've just got a question there, tactics. In terms of always putting the ball up on the kickoff to Bath's biggest pod. Yeah. A couple of bad changes. Uh, Jack Walker is coming on for Tom Dunn. And uh, Anthony Peronese giving way to uh, Scott Andrews. George Ford's penalty, by the way, uh, has stretched Leicester's lead, but it's still a. A slender one, four did, points. Did that kick off at the same time, did it, Nick? Yes. Oh, let's go. 
this is even slenderer just one point in it i don't think you'll see a more of a shoulder than that get into your gap please it's all about gloucester playing in the right areas of the field now for me right jack don't move now stay there please so Bathro with a couple of new faces and Barbara Farber Ruskin has been with us for a while but Jack Walker and Scott Andrews the prop and the tight head involved for the first time let him into the gap wait for the buying call on that far side it's a Barno against Denman oh so what are you um what have you got up well I, I only think really there's only one area of the pitch you want to be putting the ball now anywhere around here let the ball bounce either come around the short side with Hines and kick down the channel or just a straight kick from Aaron Williams off his left foot into that corner there apply the pressure see what he does he Goes passes wide. it yep and it's Trinder who kicks and Burns will hair after this and the bouncing ball could have gone anywhere and Thankfully for Bath, it landed in the arms of Foto Ali. Stuke will act as the uh, makeshift scrum half. Uh, the battering ram, as he has been all matches, Jules. Hold on. Use it! Walker heading a little closer to the fire. And then Priestland. Well, they got there in the end, Gloucester, didn't they, with a little kick through. And actually, we're able to apply the pressure through the Burns tackle. This is exactly what you need to do when you're ahead. Keep turning. They've got reasons to be cheerful. They're still very much in this game. <laughs> Ref, the clocks have gone backwards. Not quite yet, are they? Yeah, they have. That's why you're early. In a fashion sense, I think they went back 10 years down here in the southwest. <laughs> Flicked off the top by Slater. Here goes 12 trees. Time to work is legal. Hines, Williams, Morgan. Oh, he was um, lined up well by Stoop. Matu. No, no, Max. Ed Slater. Yeah, there's the gain line. That's where the, uh, <laughs> that's where we started, and uh, looks to be a long way away, doesn't it? Yeah, it's been a, a game where both defences have pushed really hard to squeeze the air out. Morgan, two or three strides forward. That's as good as it gets. Okay. And now Williams, Watson calling for it, gathering it. Clear out from Banahan to release it for Foto Ali'i. Mercer. And oh, the ball's there to be snaffled You're back, okay. but he's got to move. Uh, it's Val Rapaba Ruskin who was fine. Um, but not, is fine, but seven's got not to move so Lewis Ludlow. Well, it gives Bath a chance to clear the pressure. And, uh, four or five phases, Gloucester have had the opportunity to put the ball in behind Bath, and they've neglected to do so, and they're paying the price now. Penalty conceded. And it's the home side who are going to have the next opportunity. Gloucester are bringing on Freddie Clark. Premiership debut last season, promoted from the academy this one. And there he is, all six foot five and 18 stones of him. Last six penalties have all been conceded by Gloucester, and that's put them back in this position. There's a momentum shift, but they've managed to turn the ball over, have they, at the line-out? Or Bath? No, play on, mate. I think it, uh, it, was, it wasn't forward, anyway. Banahan's there. Um, ball didn't reach him. That's a nice clearance kick. Sensible back. as well, just to relieve the pressure from Hines, who's been outstanding so far. into the final 10 minutes. Gloucester 10 minutes away from their first away win in the Aviva Premiership this season. That's once. OK, Khan, let's start using it, please. Moving forward, that's fine. 
Wait, step away, step away, step away, step away. Well, Gloucester will be very happy with that. Referee there, Foley oh, did give Fotorelli the opportunity. He said it's happened yeah. once, you've got to start Hold using on. it. Elliot. Make sure you let those arms and tackle. I wasn't sure on that one. What do Bath need to look at here, Oz? What do they need to do to um, okay. to change the tide? Let's go. Well, they probably Gloucester want to give Gloucester the ball and just let them play and then try and get a turnover around the 10 meter line or a penalty and kick the penalty. Because at the minute, they can't get any of their own phase play going. That channel in Joseph that we saw in the first half has been closed out. And here's a chance for them to play. That was a Walker, the new hooker who drove it forward, but it wasn't cleanly driven forward and off the knock-on advantage. Once again, it's uh, Trinder. Williams under some pressure to 12 trees. He did really well. Slater again wasn't far off his shoulder. Instead, it was Matu, Rafava Roskin to Purdy. Weaves his way just over halfway. Savage. Owen Williams. First season in Cherry and White. First West Country derby for him. Not so for Thrush. Don't do that. And here goes Freddie Clark. He is a big old boy, and he made some room there. That's gone forward, and uh, Matu will be brought back. Final um, Aviva Premiership weekend, the solitary Aviva, Aviva Premiership weekend in between Europe and the start of the Anglo-Welsh Cup, and there'll be um, an Anglo-Welsh Cup field to rugby tonight on tour uh, in midweek. Uh, Martin and Hugo in Billericay, uh, and we'll be in Leicester on Saturday, watching the Cherry and Whites again at Welford Road in the Anglo-Welsh. And before well, heading down the M1 long. to Allianz Park for Saris against Quinns uh, on Sunday afternoon. Okay, I thought that was a, I thought that one was a fair competition. Okay. If, if, if they do take the arm, then that's different. Let's go. Go, Ben's boy. Yeah. Contest for the ball first. Confirmation of those changes. Jeremy Thrush on for Savage and uh, Ollie Thorley. There he is. For David Halai Fanua, who has uh, his left his impression on one or two bad players over the course of the afternoon. He's played well. He certainly has, and uh, really interesting now just to see what Bath are prepared to do off this scrum. Come again, man. Come again. Hold it. Get your balance. Scrum again, as uh, any prop loves to shout. Whatever the question, the answer is scrum again. <laughs> I just think he didn't hear what he said. <laughs> right, right, Jack, start, take off him. Seven minutes to go. Seven minutes with bragging rights for the next however many months, still up for grabs. Come, come. Photo Elite kept away by Priestland into the arms of Joseph. Always a, a hum of anticipation, but he's a little bit isolated there until a couple of bodies came in to make sure that it remained in bath hands. Here goes the captain, Charlie Yules. Walker. Falatau. Set to add to his 66 Wales caps over the autumn, but um, another five or six minutes of domestic business to get through first. Photo Elite quickly, and now Clark had to work so hard to find any kind of room to operate in today. Such has been the uh, the insistence of Gloucester's defence. Yeah, some big tackles going in, but also Gloucester just being very wary around the breakdown. A little bit of space, but Bath. Having to work hard to find that wonderful stuff from Toby Falatau to Lupe Falatau in another world for several seconds there. One-handed, single-handedly setting this up for Garvey. He's been away for a month or so. This would be some return. Smidge over five minutes to go. And we wonder if this will be the critical moment of the 80. Stoop not far away. Scott Andrews is there. 
waiting and wondering. Fotoli has it. Watson. Opportunity now for Rockendanguni. He's got a lot of chance to get beyond. Rockendanguni escapes the clutches of the ball and he may just have snatched one of the big fixtures of the season for his team. Not quite at the death, not quite there yet, but that might be the killer. With a bath, faithful erupt into voice. They've not had much to shout about in this second half, but Rockendanguni with the second try of the match and it started from his teammate and international and world-class number eight Falatau. look at this ball in two hands initially first the fend and then the movement the swerve the dynamism that we've seen little of in this second half sets up photo Ali here once they get in behind the power burst the direct route from Matt Garvey and after that the defense then narrows up and it's a question of can they get it to the outside thought they'd blown the opportunity but Rockadaguni, one of the best finishers, and when you give him one-on-one -on -one and he's got both sides to go through, he hits the inside and gets the crucial score. Seventh Premiership try this season, having left three Gloucester defenders on their backside. Oh, the work of Falatau and then Rockadaguni, and how about the conversion? They like it behind the post for good reason. And they lead by half a dozen with three and a half minutes to go. Yeah, Falatau set up the field position. As you saw, 12 degrees it really well, but he doesn't isolate the ball. Watson gets it away, and then Thornley overruns. He just gets to the outside shoulder of Rocco Daguni. That enables him to step back on the inside, utilise his strength, and get over the line. But all created by Falatau. Fantastic breakout wide. Now, this is a huge, huge kickoff for Gloucester. Andy Simmons has um, come on for Billy Twelve Trees. Owen Williams has to get this bang on the money. Slater was chasing it, and so was Freddie Clark. But they were in front of Williams from the restart, and Bath will have the scrum on halfway. Well, that you'd like to think from a Bath point of view will be that. Time's off. When uh, Gloucester analysed this game and they were ahead, they've only got themselves to blame for allowing Bath back into this game in terms of their game management. They had opportunities to pin Bath back into their own half. How many times have we seen David Humphreys do that from the fly half position? They gave away penalty after penalty and eventually gave Bath the field position for that man, Rocco Daguni, to strike. Now a big, big try meantime at Kingston Park and a try for Johnny May and for Leicester, his 10th of the season in all competitions and on a big day for the Falcons, a sellout at Kingston Park. It's Leicester who are going to go back with the treasure. They kicked off at the same time as us and Johnny May, a former Cherry and White man, of course, has um, just made it safe for his new employers. Yeah, we talk about those England wing births. He is the form winger in the league at the minute. He's a form English player arguably at the minute along with Sam Simmons you have to expect he's going to be wearing 11 come the autumn internationals now what do um Johan Ackerman's men have left over the remaining three minutes they've worked so hard to keep themselves in this contest for pretty much all of it um, has the final sentence been written by Samisa Rockendengudi or uh, are there one or two more left for us, Lol? Well, they've got a bonus point, haven't they? They've got a losing bonus point, which, um, yeah, if you're pessimistic, you'd say, well, so far this season away from home, they've taken nothing. So the minimum they must take is one point back to King's home. But you have to feel there was opportunities for them to take so, so much more. Getting these scrums sorted out hasn't been the easiest occupation today. This is the 10th reset. No and, um, no we might have an 11th here because Gloucester no have a free kick. Uh, Velikot takes it quickly, though. He is uh, eager to get on with things, as you would expect. Freddie Clark again putting his shoulder to the wheel. Velikot, who's on for Willie Hines. Williams to Burns. It's now or never for Trinder and Co. But no cause is ever lost when Trinder has his hands on the ball. This is Artu Matu. Williams, Ackerman, held on to forcibly by Mercer. 
Taken up by the new man, Andy Simmons. 90 seconds to go. Freddie Clark once more, who's been throwing his weight around since coming on, and Elliot Stoop doing what he can to slow things down. It's still there for Velikot. Williams, oh, and the big hit from Garvey. That was a collision. Motumatu took the brunt of it. On we go. And again, it's Simmons, who is big and strong in midfield. He'll play like a forward now. Matu not holding on to it long. Here goes once more, Clark. A converted try to snatch it. But you've got to hold on to the ball. And Owen Williams has lost it. And maybe two Gloucester have lost their final opportunity. Oh. Henry Purdy coming in. Wallets away up to halfway by um, Reese Priestland. So still a little bit of meat left on the bone, but not much now left for Gloucester to do to rescue something. Man of the match. Well, Gloucester Goal. fans biting their nails. The they put in a big performance, their best away from home. Hines with two tries, but unfortunately it's not enough for them. And Bath are the ones that look likely to come away with this victory. The try set up by Falatau. He's been more and more prominent in this second half, but it is about scoring when you get the opportunity and that man has done that twice today and he's our Aviva Premiership man of the match Samisa Rokadaguni a decision to be made here they're going to go into the corner they give themselves one more chance how much is Owen Williams prepared to bite off Did he back himself to put it five meters out that's not a bad kick it's not bad it's not perfect stay in the mark don't jump across but Gloucester have got one more shot at getting something out of this game, which you could argue on the balance of play they deserve. Huge throw for um, Matu. Almost inevitably it goes to Ed Slater, who very quickly has become the big driving cog in this Gloucester pack. And they're driving towards the line. They might be giving themselves an opportunity here. There's a penalty coming. It's not enough for Gloucester, they need the try, they need the converted try. And with time up, they're going for it. Williams, oh, he very nearly did it all on his own there. Here's Simmons. Number in the side. Still penalty advantage. Mercer, another penalty coming. Gloucester metre by metre, they were losing ground, but critically they still have the ball and they still have hope. This is Velikot. And now Trinder managing to get it away to Williams in his first ever West Country derby. Is it to be the most dramatic of finishes? Gloucester stretching every sinew for their first Premiership win of the season. Slater's waiting, Rapava Ruskin's barking the orders. Matu is ready for it, but so is that blue, black and white defence. Another edge of the seat finish to one of those Premiership fixtures that very rarely disappoints. Meaty thrust being repelled by meaty thrust at the moment, however. This is Thrush. Six metres short. Two minutes beyond the end of normal time. Phase-wise double figures now. This is the 11th. Oh, oh an enormous hit. hit. It's another penalty, however. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Velikot with his spring heel. Boots will be keen to get on with it. Five. Yep. Charlie Yules, what a tackle defense. that was from the blind side. Again, 16. Oh, we've got no arms what do they do here? Against, do they go uh, for the scrub? Do, do they go for the line out? Which one do we want? Yeah, which one do you want? Well, they had three penalty advantages. The referee said, which one do you want? Do you want the one under the post, which will be a scrum if you want that? Or do you want the one right here on the five metre line? They've opted for the collapsing no of the ball. No more. no more. So that's three penalties. You've got to feel they're on their last warning now. And Gloucester are on their last chance. But they still have a chance. They're still in this game. And again, Motu Matu. Oh, and 
Jones ahead of the ball with Stuke. Has he done enough to get it back on the blue, black and white side? There's still Cherry and White Hope. There's the ball. Velikot has it. Rapava Ruskin head down, driving towards the line. Is this generating some winning momentum? Thrush again. And in a game that's been largely about defence, the concluding lines are being written by the defenders at the moment, but it's still there. Henry Purdy waits on the far right-hand side, burns! Oh, he couldn't get that ball away because of Watson's intervention, but being driven towards the line. What a finish! Four extra minutes, and we still go, and Gloucester still go, and Velikot again, and... Got to be careful with a no-arm tackle here, Nick, with a back forwards diving in low. Could be a turnover. Well, it's not pretty, but it could barely be more important for Gloucester right now. The win they treasure more than any in a season. They are that close to snatching it! They think they've scored! Tom Foley less sure. And we're going to need the intervention of a TMO with his zapper in our truck to decide our, who's going to win this match. This question's so important now, Nick. Tom? Yes, do it. What do you, what's the question, The mate? question is try yes or no, please, do it. OK, buddy. That's a try. Well, looks like it was short initially as he grounds it, but then it, it's, Ed Slater, it's Slater yeah. gets it over the line. I think there's enough of that ball on the line to give the try. Try yes or no. Makes it a lot harder. If there's any reason I can't award the try, this is a definite five points, but... I just wonder if there's another angle from here, from in front. That one's going to be quite difficult. Slater, as you see there, the ball goes down. It's just short there, but then the momentum gets it on the line. I think we're it looks like a try. Angles, Tom, so okay, we've got right, yeah. to, we're going to take our time. Now you'll have heard Stuart Terridge say we're looking for clear angles. I think we can assume that Ed Slater has kept con control of that ball or, or has the right forearm just come off it no i think he's got control of the ball nick i think the only question is has it made the line yeah. but when he initially puts it on the ground it's not quite oh, yeah, there it's on the point but then as the ball falls forward this i think the tip of the ball rolls yeah, onto the white of the line it. and therefore okay, so it's five this points. is the best angle and this got. is the best angle isn't it here we go confirmed by the team yeah. that's fine but then as you go forward austin as you say just to clear things up here Stuart Terridge, Tom Foley have to be sure that that's a try, given the question. I'm Just pretty sure that's a try. That's on frame the line. by frame, please. Rock forward. Look there. As you Stop go there, forward. please. Stop there. Stop there. OK, that's on the line. Tom, yes, mate. There, the ball touches the line. It is a try. Thank you, mate. Touches the line. Trial by Zappa. Now. And Gloucester are going to get the try. They're not yet sure of the win, but listen to the noise when this is confirmed. They're celebrating down below like they have won it, which they haven't yet. They've still got the conversion to come. Yeah. You've, only, you've only still got a losing bonus point yeah. currently. <laughs> it's not an easy kick, this. Get your timing right. And he's brought it out a long way On to open point up point. the angle of the posts. Oh, Owen Williams. Owen Williams. Named in the Wales squad earlier this week. Chance to add to his well, one test cap so far. Now the chance to make himself a cherry and white hero. Some can't watch. First away win of the season, and it's a win that they treasure above all others. Gloucester have done it at the wreck, they're winning away. Ed Slater's try, and the composure and courage of Owen Williams has snatched it for them at the end. Final score, Bath 21, Gloucester 
with this conversion 22. Well, the Bath faithful can't quite believe what they've seen here. 